In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the HTA1 thermal camera by HTI. The HTA1 is a moderately priced standalone thermal camera. Depending where you're purchasing this from, it can range anywhere from about $200 up to about $600. Let's open up the packaging and I'll show you what comes inside. So right away, you're greeted with the owner's manual. The device. Underneath the device, you're going to have a carrying strap, charging block, and the charger for the device. First impressions of the device, the quality is nice. The camera is small enough to fit comfortably in your hand. It has a hard shell wrapping all around on each side of the device. On the right hand side, you've got a camera button. On the left, the charging port is tucked away. It's a micro USB. It would have been nice to see this device with a USB-C charger. The left button is your menu and power. Right is enter and select, and you've got a four-way toggle. On the rear of the device, you'll see the camera and the IR sensor. Let's turn this device on, and I'll show you how it works. The device powers up pretty quick, about 30 seconds or less. The specs on the camera are 220 by 160. That's 480p. The temperature range is going to run from minus 20 to 300 degrees Celsius. The camera has very basic settings. You can jump in, see if you have any images stored. You can adjust the color palette. Also adjust the clarity of your images. Going into the settings, you can adjust the language the temperature format, date and time. You can also adjust the auto shut off. Mine is currently set to five minutes. Let's show you how this works. The camera will start out in its image. You have a four way adjustment that allows you to overlay the thermal imagery. Let's move in a cup of coffee. So this is only imaging in the thermal with no underlay anymore. You can see that the temperature on this is about 65 degrees. We'll move the coffee out of the way. I'm going to move in a cup with an ice cube. You can see the ice cube is at minus 12 and the counter is still warm radiating from the cup. This is an image here of my hand. As you back off the thermal imaging, you'll see the original image start to reappear. It doesn't lay over perfectly. You can see the lapse between my fingers here. And now you're back to the existing photo. We'll show you now how the photo image works. So if you move to the right four times, you'll be in the max thermal, or you can go back to the left. When you hit the camera button on the side, it will give you a yes or no. The left side button here will take your photo. You can now go into the images. And if you want to delete the photo, you push up. Again, it's yes or no. So we'll hit yes. Image is deleted. We're back to the camera. Overall, for a moderately priced thermal camera, I would recommend this if you can purchase it in the range of about $200 to $300. Any more than that, I think there's better options out there for you. For a budget-friendly, standalone thermal camera, I think this is a great option. If you found this review useful or you like this content, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.